Hello, my name is Y Lam, and today we're going to be looking at the Shindrones Mitsuko frame. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, this is a frame that can support a four inch prop, and it's kind of borderline frame that you can actually build to be under half a pound, which is basically under the FAA regulations, but you would have to run a very small battery. Uh, it has some uh, interesting traits, and uh, we'll share that with you as soon as we uh, unbox this. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. When you get most of your Shinjiron frames, they usually come in this tough uh, Ziploc bag, which is perfectly fine with me because I get an extra Ziploc bag once I'm done building the frame. Uh, first thing you'll see is the base plate. It's nice and thick. Uh, it's great for a four inch frame or a four inch uh, propeller frame. The sticker, uh, again another cool sticker, uh, They Ginger Owens does a good job of making some cool stickers. We have a bag here for the uh, top plate and also for the camera uh, mounting system which goes on top of the top plate. Lastly we have the screws that we'll need and all of the spacers. So we just started putting this together. Uh, interesting to note is that uh, of the five spacers, one of them is longer. So the longer one won't actually go onto um, the base plate. But uh, I do like these pink spacers. Uh, they're kind of unique. And it's nice to have something that's different colors than the ones that we're used to. Here is the top plate. Uh, the hole, uh, that represents the back of the uh, top plate. And what we did was we took one of the longer uh, screws and then we put the nut on, on top to keep them together. And what you will do is you will take this, uh, this unique little notch over here is where uh, that screw is going to go into. So you just face it in the right direction, line it up with the notch in the back, and then you can go ahead and put it through and then you'll tighten it down for both sides. And that's, it, it seems like this is the easiest way to get uh, both sides uh, put together. So we'll just go ahead and take an Allen key and you're probably not going to be able to see this but I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this and then tighten it down. So this is what the top plate looks like uh, when it's finished. So once you get both the sides uh, loosen, loosely lined up go ahead and put uh, the camera plate in uh, the camera plate, once you put it in, is still pretty loose. So I'm assuming you can type this, uh, this piece in the back down a little bit to strengthen it, but you might actually have to have uh, either some glue or something else to uh, keep it in, in place because right now it is still pretty loose. But the last uh, spacer, which is longer than the spacers for the base plate, uh, is a little bit longer because it's meant to go up here. And then once you have this in place, you can put this on top and that will complete your build. So this is what the frame looks like when you have it together. It's a very good looking frame, very interesting frame. So one thing you'll notice is that uh, depending on how you put the front of this top piece together is going to affect how the battery sits down here because here are the two slots for the battery strap. So if you were to put this at an, uh, over here, the battery would be sitting down here like this. But the way that we have it situated, the battery down here would sit like this because the strap will be uh, going front and back. Uh, personal preference in my opinion, uh, we just put it on this way. We really weren't even thinking about it when we put it on. One interesting thing about this is how it flies. So traditionally, we're pretty used to having our quads fly in a uh, X pattern like this. But this spe uh, specific frame actually flies like this. It's actually like a plus sign. So that makes it very uniquely interesting. And the reason why they did that is because the motors uh, with a propeller on uh, doing it as a plus sign doesn't need to clear this spacer. And this makes it a smaller frame. Uh, uh, it's probably going to be smaller than the 180, uh, the tweaker I mean. So because of this, we're really interested to see how this flies when we build it out. 
And so this is the build that I've been actually flying. As you can see, I've uh, definitely put it uh, through its paces. It's been crashed quite a bit and uh, all sign points to this being a really good frame and it flies really well. So I'll just quickly go through what's on this particular uh, quadcopter and then just talk about what I've learned from it. Uh, starting with the motors, these are the Lumineer 1806s, 2500 kV. Uh, really good motors, um, been really impressed with them. Uh, they flew really well, even using Dow props, which um, for me uh, generally destroys components uh, very quickly because they don't break. And when they don't break, what you get is a uh, a higher electrical surge when you uh, crash because props are designed to break and then allow the motors to keep spinning. So if you do use something like Dow props, uh, you definitely want to oversize your ESCs and make sure that uh, you know all of your boards can take like a 6S battery. It'll actually really help with the surges and then uh, your components will last longer. But so far, uh, really impressed with these motors. Uh, they've held up really well and uh, crashed them quite a bit. And uh, so far, no problems. Uh, one thing I will say is that um, the screws that come with the motors aren't particularly good. On one crash, uh, you'll notice right here that I actually broke uh, the head off of the screw. There's actually another one over here that did the exact same thing. So the frame came out the other side perfectly fine no issues with them but I actually crashed hard enough to where the screws came off and if you actually look right here on the video transmitter uh, I crashed hard enough to where uh, parts of it actually broke off uh, went through the uh, shrink wrap and uh, fell off so that's how I, how hard I crashed uh, all the other components came out just fine it flies just fine I actually flew the rest of the day just uh, line of sight and uh, practice my ac uh, acro but uh, yeah crashed it so hard that the, the VTX basically just uh, fragmented fragmented apart motors and everything else though came back just fine uh, inside here is the uh, it's the uh, TBS power cube so um, for a four inch prop in a frame of this size this is definitely um, way too much of uh, ESCs and uh, for this particular build but the reason why I used it is one I just wanted to test to see if the power cube would actually fit in here and two uh, because like these ESCs can take like a 48 45 amp burst uh, with a lot of crashing um, it's been just fine uh, generally speaking like I said what I've seen from other people and myself included is that anytime you use unbreakable props like Dow props you'll uh, it's really hard on the components because your electrical surges are going to be uh, a lot a lot higher but uh, so far no issues been really happy with it uh, generally speaking like two fly sessions on Dow props I'll check the uh, propellers and I'll put new ones on there just to keep uh, uh, not warped ones on my flying machine but uh, I've been really happy with uh, being able to use Dow props and uh, these components and not have any issues uh, because I used the power cube um, I didn't have room to put a VTX and I had to put it out here which uh, is probably a source of a uh, problem in terms of durability as you can see I'm probably going to replace this one with probably something with a metal case on it to see if it lasts longer but really I haven't had any issues until that one hard crash I used a uh, SMA extension and I just zip tied it to the top and what this has allowed uh, the, the antenna to do is move around freely and what I found is that the antennas last way longer even on hard crashes because it's just allowed to move. And if I crash really hard, the zip tie will break and allow it to move freely. Probably replaced about four or five zip ties, but uh, that's a lot cheaper than uh, replacing antennas. In the back, uh, on this uh, spacer pull right in between, I actually stuck a red LED uh, bar back here just to give me uh, some reference. If I lay in line of sight, uh, it's been really useful. I always like to have at least one LED on my quad, uh, so I just put it back here. I'm using a uh, Spectrum satellite receiver. Put it over here. Have had no issues with this one. Uh, it's been really durable. Uh, good signal strength. Haven't had a problem. Been very happy with it. So definitely, uh, oh, definitely not an issue. No problems. Been been good to go. Uh, the camera is the. Uh, it's the 1177M 
It's the uh, it's the uncased version of the 1177. It's the popular camera that everybody uses and builds for. This one just doesn't have a case, which makes it a little bit smaller and easier to put into a frame of this size. But uh, overall, uh, put this together rather quickly, actually, and it's pretty easy to build because there's really no soldering involved in uh, this. I, I basically put it together just to fly it a little bit to give you, uh, you know, some perspective on flight characteristics of a plus frame. But uh, it actually flies so well that I've been flying it uh, as my main uh, craft for a while now, and uh, as you can see. Uh, when you fly it a lot, you crash it a lot. Uh, I think I'm going to have some video up of uh, my last flight session so you can kind of see the flight characteristics for yourself. But uh, overall, I've been really happy with it. Uh, in terms of flying it, uh, anytime you fly a ship of this size, uh, especially if you have high rates, what you're going to see is it's going to roll and it's going to pitch uh, a lot quicker because the motors are going to be much closer to the center. So when the motors are much closer to the center, uh, any type of yaw and pitch uh, will work very quickly. So like um, what you'll see is the, like uh, rates on a five inch machine. If you bring it down to a four inch machine like this with this small uh, of dimensions is that uh, you'll probably roll a whole lot quicker than expected and you're going to have to adjust. Like this one, I have a tendency to roll. Uh, I will do a double barrel roll uh, with the same stick throw that I would expect from like a 5 inch one which would give me a single barrel roll. So overall um, it flies really well, it flies fast and out of the box um, I don't really see any disadvantages to the uh, plus uh, design. Uh, I am kind of interested though to see if I can um, change the motors on on these to see if I can get better performance like change the two outer ones to bigger size motors to see if I can get uh, better speed or better barrel rolls or maybe the uh, two front and back ones uh, to bigger motors to see what it would do because I mean the way that it's designed you know each motor kind of has a dedicated role this uh, these two would control pitch and these two can uh, control roll so I might experiment with that a little bit later and if I find anything interesting I will definitely try to report that but uh, that's just a quick assessment uh, of this particular frame. It's been flying really well. I'm probably going to keep this together. I'll just repair the uh, VTX and the cable and keep flying this. Uh, it's a great little recreational machine. It's been flying really well. I've been really happy with it. So that's just a uh, quick vlog of uh, this particular machine. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching.